All right, welcome back. So last time we started our Maria Martinez inspired pieces of pottery. We talked about low contrast and how we want our values um, of our materials to be very close instead of very far away. So we're creating things that don't stand out as much, don't have a lot of contrast, but rather kind of blend in um, like Maria Martinez's unique pottery. So we did our designs inspired by nature and um, and we colored those in with the graphite pencil so that way it's shiny. After that, now we're going to use two different kinds of medium, also in black, so that way we are creating a low contrast. So for the bigger parts, I'm going to do crayon. And for the inside parts, I'm going to do Sharpie uh, because if I did that crayon too, it might disappear. So I'm going to speed this up once again. Remember, you can pause if you need to. Uh, and we'll see how much contrast we really make. This is a good time to remind you that if you don't have different mediums, uh, if you use the same medium, just try to make the areas look slightly different. So if you have like pencil, um, you can maybe shade it a different way or make it a little lighter or a little bit darker. Um, you can see I started with crayon, but then I decided to go with paint. So you can also experiment with different kinds of, let's say you have a Crayola marker and a Sharpie, I guarantee you that they will look different next to each other. So whatever material you have to make a black or a really dark gray, use those in the different sections so that way the quality of your dark color is a little different and makes a slight contrast. It's a good time to remind you also about craftsmanship, trying to fill in our areas so that they're neat and intentional. All right, so the last thing we're going to do, now that this is dry, I want you to really look at how the different mediums create a different kind of effect. So the pencil, the graphite, and like a normal pencil, not a color pencil, is very shiny. Um, the paint and the crayon are kind of matte. Actually, the crayon's a little shiny too sometimes. Um, and then the Sharpie has a different kind of finish as well. So even though we weren't doing pottery itself, we used different kinds of mediums to create different sorts of finishes. Um, now for our background, we're going to be doing a neutral background. Now, neutrals are our blacks, our browns, our tans that are kind of like brownish based um, and white. Neutrals are separate because they are, well, they're not typically on the color wheel. Let me find us a color wheel. Here's a color wheel. You won't find neutrals on the color wheel and that's because usually neutrals are made from colors mixed together. So if you add like complementary colors together, you'd make a neutral. Neutrals are also important because I want to point out that most of the clay um, that is used are typically neutral colors. Um, they do kind of vary into the reds a little bit. So our background is going to be inspired by different kind of neutral colors that might be a color of clay. So what I want you to do is I want you to divide your background so that we can make different sections. I'm going to do kind of a horizon line across the back and then I'm going to do kind of like mountains that divide into these big areas and maybe I'll have one dividing line. I'm going to have one that goes down the middle of this whole thing. Okay. So I'm going to create the background in neutral colors. I'm going to do this with paint. You can do a crayon color pencil or whatever else you have. I'm gonna make some colors too, um, which will be kind of fun. But we're gonna use everything but black. So you can use browns, tans, grays, uh, like especially if you're doing like gray in the sky. So clay can be for us, when we're in school, there's um, kind of a more white clay. Um, it comes from the ground, so if you think of here in North Carolina, when you go outside um, or there's a construction site, your clay can be a little more orange or um, almost red looking. So maybe one of thine, I'll mix a little bit of red in, but I still want to keep it kind of in that neutral 
that neutral kind of area, not like bright red, but just a muted or less saturated kind of red. So let's make a more reddish brown or a warmer brown. Here's my brown. And then I'm gonna add a little orange to it. And I have to make enough so that way it actually covers my space. There we go. It's a little oranger. And then add a tiny bit of red to it. Why not? And if you don't have a variety of um, different colors, like let's say you have a crayon box and you just have like brown and tan, you can also layer them together. You can do one area that's like a darker brown and one that's like a lighter brown. Um, but as long as you're using neutral colors for the background, we're kind of honoring and thinking about different kinds of clay, things that come from the earth. If I'm gonna do a tan, I might take that. Actually, let me show you how I would mix a color. Let's say I take blue, and I'm gonna take blue's opposite, which is orange. Mm. Yeah, I'll use this orange, why not? Mix it together, and it kind of makes a neutral kind of different kind of brown. I'm gonna keep mixing it. I'm honestly trying to get it to look kind of grayish. There's a sweet spot in between colors that if you mix them together, you can produce kind of a gray. And it has to be the exact right colors. Okay, I might just stick with the brown that I've made here. Okay. Ooh, it's kind of like a little cooler. different. That's neat. So it's a different kind of brownish or grayish. Maybe I'll do one straight gray. Mm, no, I don't want to do that one straight gray because it's going to touch my pottery. Maybe I'll do the top one gray. So I'll use black. Maybe I'll mix it with a little bit of brown so it's a little different. And typically I would wait until that color is dry so that these would not bleed together. But I'm just gonna try to be really careful. Not to use too much water. Okay, so I have brownishes, tans, grayishes. Hmm. Maybe I'll do one more that's a little more yellow. Because I feel like clay can sometimes be a tiny bit more yellow. 
Once again, not a perfect yellow. I'm going to mix it. So I'm gonna do yellow and then I'm gonna mix yellow with its opposite. My poor yellow is getting really muddy. Yeah. The opposite of yellow is purple. I'm not gonna add too much purple because I don't want it to um, completely take away my yellow, but I am neutralizing it by putting its opposite in. There we go. Kind of yellowish, but more neutralized, less what's called saturated. It's desaturated, less vivid. What's also great about this is that if you don't have paint, like if you wanted to paint, um, you could use something like coffee or tea because those are neutral kind of brown colors. Um, that'd be an interesting way to make neutrals. Um, once you are done, take a look back. We can see that we have our Potter Honorary Maria Martinez that shows us like unique, low contrast way of having pottery. And then in the background, thinking of our neutrals, thinking of our clay that comes from the earth that gives us the ability to make this kind of pottery.